Do you believe in ghosts? Yes, my office is haunted. Really? Mm, not really. No, not at all? A little bit. Um, I believe in the possibility of ghosts. I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. But it's a homosexual ghost. A homosexual ghost? Yes. Oh, that's pretty terrifying. <laughs> oh, oh, you have no idea. No, I've never had any uh, ghost, ghostly apparitions or poltergeists sure. or anything like that, but um, sure. I, I do know my work is supposed to be haunted. What about the, um, the university here? Do you, have you heard any rumors about ghosts at this university? Yeah. You haven't, you haven't heard anything? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah? Ah, oh, they're all over the place. They're I'd hang out here if I was a ghost. There's been a university in Auckland for close to 150 years. It survived two world wars, a Great Depression, and almost a century student politics. It's boasted some of the country's most notable academics as staff or alumni. What we're trying to establish is whether or not Auckland University has a supernatural side. We approached the question as skeptics. We thought surely a place as big and as historic as Auckland University is bound to have its share of bedtime stories. What prompted us to investigate the topic in the first place was a discussion with a friend at Shadows one Friday night. You know, Auckland University is definitely haunted. It's really, it's such a weird place to go to school in because you just, I don't know, there's some places like the new buildings, it's, it's fine, but there's some old buildings there, are just, it's just really weird, like you just walk into the, there's a lecture theatre um, in the old Corral Hall and the commerce students will go in there but I had like one or two lectures in there of philosophy which is alright and I kind of couldn't really work out where I was going like it's you know, the Corral Hall so I ended up in there and um yeah I don't know like I'm not a particularly spooky person but I walked in there and immediately just went oh this is really weird and it was just like really weird little things used to happen like used to sit, I used to sit in the lecture theatre and and feel like, and someone would come and sit next to me. And I'd turn to kind of go, you know, shift over or let them in or move my books or whatever. And, and there'd be no one there. It's here that reports of unusual activity seem to focus. Old Coral Hall is one of the university's oldest buildings. Thousands of students have been taught in it. But the most obvious question is, has anyone ever died here? There has been a building where the old Coral Hall now stands since 1871. The original wooden structure was destroyed in a fire and re-erected in brick in 1873. Since its opening, it served as the chief place of assembly for Auckland City and the university's inauguration ceremony was held here in 1883. The hall was purchased by Auckland University in 1908 and has had several additions to the main structure since. So, Hannah, have you had any um, classes in the old Coral Hall? I had one back in first year. I had a five till six, and I didn't really like going in there or leaving at night when it was dark because I sort of got this really weird vibe when I was in there, sort of really cold feeling. And I spoke to some friends of mine, and everyone that I spoke to said that they didn't like going in there either, and that they sort of had a weird, a weird feeling going in there as well. And I didn't really think anything of it until I got the Crackham job and I was looking through some archives for a piece that I was researching. And um, then I found this one from 1930 and I found this obituary for this lecturer, Albert Morris. Albert Morris that had um, died that used to teach in Old Coral Hall. We now had a name, a lead, something to go on. But who was Albert Morris and why did he die in this building? Albert Morris was born in Taranaki, September 2nd, 1887. He was the second child of Reginald and Nora Morris, and moved to Auckland in 1908 to pursue an academic career. After completing his degree in botany in July 1914, he accepted a commission as a resident lecturer at the university. He continued to teach botany until 1930. After the stock market crash of 1929, the world entered a period known as the Great Depression. Auckland University wasn't unaffected. They had to make cutbacks in some of their more obscure departments. Teaching was Morris's life. When the botany department, like many others, had its funding cut indefinitely, he didn't take the news well. Morris was made redundant. October 1930. From what we can gather, he finished cleaning out his office at 7pm. 
Then he came into this lecture theatre, ascended these stairs, and strung a rope of one of the beams that once held up this ceiling. At this point we proposed spending a night inside the haunted lecture theatre, but unfortunately university health and safety procedures prohibited it. As a compromise, the faculty did allow us to set up one of our cameras on time-lapse inside the lecture theatre overnight. The results that this experiment yielded were unexpected. What we are looking at is a time-lapse shot of OCH2. The black object on the desk is a voice-activated dictaphone, which we had hoped would record any noises during the night. Around 2.30am the camera picked up a bright flash of light. Notice that after this disruption the dictaphone was no longer visible. We found it on the floor one row down from where we had left it the following morning. The dictaphone was broken and the audio on the tape was unretrievable. As we stated at the very beginning, we entered this project as a couple of sceptics. And while this evidence that we've collected is compelling, it's also largely inconclusive. If Albert Morris still walks the corridors of the old Coral Hall, then he will continue to do so as quietly as he has done for the past 70 years. Mm -hmm.